Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your boy, Mr. Ghana, baby. And I hope you've already liked the video even before watching. Are you new to the channel? Please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Like 481,000 subscribers. Can we just reach 500,000 subscribers? I literally get more than 50,000 views, so which means that if 50,000 people are watching me, you can share the video to your friends and family so that we'll be able to reach the 500,000 as soon as possible. I don't know why I'm so happy today because I feel like Ghanaians are amazing. I feel like there are so many Ghanaians that are doing incredible stuff in Ghana that no one is showing this to the world. There is a woman in Ghana who used the cocoa bean and processed it into what? A chocolate. So from the bean to the bar, which is amazing. And you know what? She doesn't even have a factory. She's doing this right from her home. We got to put this on camera. And if you're watching this video, please do me a favor and share this video. And I can't wait to visit all the 54 African countries and show these amazing things that is happening in your country to the world. Aya Maya, come with me. Let's talk to the owner. Aya Maya. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us. And love is all we love. Good to see you. Thank you. Wow. It's a pleasure to meet you too. Actually. You did an amazing job and everyone out there is telling me that I need to meet you. The Ghanaian woman who converted the beam to the bar. This is incredible. But it isn't so many people out there don't know who you are. But I know you personally. No, oh. not personally, but I've heard a lot mm -hmm. about you. Mm -hmm. So if you can tell me your name, where you're from, and I just I'm here for your story. Okay. That's that's why I'm here. Okay. Yeah. Um, my name is Jean Adro Adonko, and um, I'm originally from Asante Ascori and uh, Wenchi. Wow. And uh, I went to Wesley Girls High School. After living outside for several years, my, uh, our, the family decided to move back to Ghana to see what we could contribute and we thought we'd been out for a while um, and we thought let's go see what's there after all it's home I mean I find that a lot of Africans doesn't matter how long they are away you always look back you know so we came in and uh, I worked in what you'd call corporate Ghana for a while when I decided to start this um, chocolate business only out of curiosity to see what I could do with cocoa. Um, you said you lived outside for a while. Mm -hmm. Where were you? I was in the U.S. For how long? I was in the U.S. I would say for almost 20 years. 20 years? Consistently. Then um, I think I was on and off there for about two years. What were you doing in the state? I went to school, then I worked there as well as a legal assistant for years, yeah. And after 20 years, he decided to come back home. Mm -hmm. Wow. I know a lot of people out there who are watching us at this very moment. Mm -hmm. And anytime I tell them, hey, it's time to come back home, they tell me, no way. I think it's, it's an even more exciting time to come back home than when I did. Why? Because there's so much happening in Ghana and on the continent. Particularly for young people, this is a time for you to grab things and just run with it. There is um, an excitement going on. Um, I don't know if it's an African renaissance, it's a Ghanaian renaissance, but there's so much to do. I think there's so much opportunity here to be back home and to be part of the change and don't get left behind. Um, it's tough, but it's tough everywhere. You know, it's tough everywhere. And you know, um, I made it, and if I did, anybody else can do it. She made it, that's the reason why your boy, Mr. Ghana Baby, is here. But I just wanted to know, why this chocolate factory? I mean, it's, it's, it's a factory, but a homemade mm -hmm. um, chocolate mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. bean to the bar. Mm -hmm. Why you decided to go to um, chocolate? Because there's so many things to do in here, but I decided to choose chocolate. 
I went with chocolate because, first of all, I was curious. You know, um, how is it possible that in all, this, in all these years, with cocoa beans having such an impact on the economy of this country and on all of us, where most of us growing up, most of my classmates went to school on a, what we call the Cocoa Marketing Board Scholarship. So cocoa had something to do with all of us, but we don't eat it. I mean, um, you talk to the farmers, they don't even know what melo is, some of them. And if they do, they don't even know, I mean, how much cocoa is a melo? A minuscule amount of cocoa. Um, but cocoa is very versatile. And so in my research, I saw that, wait a minute, the cocoa beans growing here, but we don't eat what comes out of the cocoa beans. We don't use what comes out of the cocoa beans. We are all into share butter, but there's cocoa butter. Yes, yeah. there's cocoa butter. There's uh, what we call cocoa liquor, which is when you take the cocoa butter away, what is left. There's cocoa husk, cocoa tea, cocoa scrub, for, cocoa for cosmetics, cocoa for health. I mean, the health benefits of cocoa are just documented, not uh, anecdotal, but documented. So I thought, okay, let me learn about cocoa. Let me learn about it and learn and do it in a way that is beneficial to me and to my customers. So which year was this? 2016. 2016. I never forget the day I finished voting. I came back and started my first order. Was that your first voting in Ghana? Because no, no, no. I had voted before in two previous uh, elections, yes. Okay. But you, the name of your brand is... Bioko, Bioko, Bioko. Bioko. Um, in doing my research, I realized that I thought, okay, listen, um, if if you don't look back into history and see how does history, how is history going to impact me in the future, and you just go on living your life, you are bound to make mistakes. You learn from history, so I thought, let me go back into history and see. What is, how did cocoa come to have such an impact with us? We don't eat cocoa. You know, we eat plantain, we grow plantain, we eat plantain, we grow cassava, we eat cassava. But we don't do cocoa, it's only for export, why? Palm oil, we use palm oil. We grow the palm nuts, we use it. But it's only cocoa, and why not? So in my research, uh, I grew up also knowing that our cocoa beans were supposed to have started in Fernando Po. So I did a lot of research on it. And I thought, okay, in what way can I pay homage to the man who is credited with bringing commercial cocoa farming to Ghana? Tetakwashi. I thought Tetakwashi would be a name that wouldn't cross over in terms of it's a bit wordy. And it's, um, I can say Tetakwashi, but how many other people who are not from Ghana can say Tetakwashi? So I thought, okay, what about paying homage to the place that he got the beans from? Because after all, those beans, the tree that he grew with them, are still, are still supposed to be standing in yeah. the Tetakwashi farms. And then I realized that the Fernando Po was um, a name given to the island of Bioko by the colonial mass, the Portuguese. Yeah. So I thought, okay, why not use Bioko? It's a journey. And we are all on a journey in this life. So I thought, okay, the cocoa beans took a journey from Bioko wow. to Accra. And that's Bioko in Equatorial Guinea. Bioko in Equatorial Guinea. That's a beautiful story. Yeah, so that's how can we have Bioko. And so far, how many people have you employed in here? We have about, um, we have six full time. And then when you're very busy, sometimes we're getting about two more people to help us like during the busy seasons, Christmas and Valentine. It's a homemade chocolate right now. Do it you is. you plan making it bigger? Yes, we plan on scaling up. Wow. And um, we are going to scale up. I would love to go in there and go check it out, but I have some few questions which is kind of general. Okay. I was gonna ask you before we go to okay. your kitchen. Yeah. Um, I just wanna know, do you think Africa is the future? Um, I do. I know it is the future. And I, and I believe very strongly that it's also the present. 
I know it's the future because we have such a young, a large young population who, um, a lot of whom are here in Africa and a lot of whom are also out in the diaspora. And these people are coming back. And you know, when I came, I worked in a hotel. And I saw over the years, the change in the demographics of the customers who came to the hotel. Initially, it used to be just foreigners, mostly, not just, mostly. Very slowly, I saw Ghanaians coming in to the hotel to enjoy our services. Not only the bedrooms, but also the food and beverage. So, what I'm trying to say is, the, the, as the population becomes more sophisticated in terms of not just education, but in terms of exposure, which comes with the internet, with all television, whatever. Africans and Ghanaians, young people especially, are exposed more, and they know that there's no limit on what you can do. The limits are what we place on ourselves. You know, people talk about corruption, people talk about, oh, nothing happens here. It's true, I go through the same frustrations. I grunt and rave. But I'm telling you, the future is here. I, you know, I'm trying to get my kids to come home. I tell them, you come and see. Where are you now? They're in the U.S. I, I, I just want you to help me. Mm -hmm. um, I know your kids will be watching this video. Probably they are subscribers of one of my, mm -hmm. I don't even know. But I hope so. <laughs> and, um, you know, we have a lot of Africans living in the diaspora, including mm -hmm. your kids. Mm -hmm. If you have an advice, for such people in terms of like, I mean, relocating, what advice will you give to people like that? Um, I think you should look at what does a continent need right now? What kind of skills do we need? Do you understand? And work towards gaining those skills. And come with a free mind. Please don't come expecting to earn the salaries that you earn there, but come expecting freedom. Come expecting to be able to walk down the street without feeling like I'm in the wrong neighborhood because of my skin color. Come expecting to fight. I mean, you fight everywhere. To fight with civil servants, to fight with uh, doctors, to fight with whatever. But come with an open mind. It's an exciting time to be, particularly in Ghana. I'm telling you. I mean, it's an exciting time to come back to Ghana. Yes. Can you take me around? Yes, I will. Kitchen and I will mm -hmm. continue. Okay. Thank you. Where we do most of our work, yeah, we, um, the only chocolate company actually that does these colored bonbons, which we use cocoa butter colors that um, we use for it. So these are the, um, uh, this is what we do here. We, we, we use, we try to use as much local stuff as possible. This is called Zoe. I don't know if you know Zoe. You know Adakwa? Adakwa, yeah. Yeah, this way, this Adakwa. You're going to have to taste some. This is Adakwa. This is uh, passion fruit and mango. This is uh, toasted rice. This is caramel. This is lime. Actually, this is lemon. Uh, where is lime? So this is cocoa, cocoa nips and coffee. Um, and this is coffee. So what we try to do is we try to use as little imported stuff as possible. We do add some, this is Prosecco, and this is almond. But the cocoa nips is like, we, we, we roast the cocoa beans here, and then we roast it in a small roaster, and then we crack it and make the cocoa nips. So we add it to the coffee as well. You know, I don't want everything to sound so rosy, so <laughs> definitely there should be some kind of challenges that yes we do face. we do have challenges one of our biggest challenges is you know we are growing yeah. and we need to scale up and really need to move off these premises we would love to be somewhere a central closer to our customers i mean also it's quite central mm. but we would want to be even more central but the cost of rent is is such a killer and it's a sort of it um as a small business person with the current thing, give us a year's advance rent. I mean, if you take that much money out of your 
you know, your budget. It's, you're just not going to make it. Then also, we have, for us doing the bean to the bar, yes, we get the beans, um, you know, from Ghana, yeah. but everything else that goes into there is imported. I mean, you, you, sugar, we buy it here, but it's imported. We should be able to have a sugar industry. We do um, milk powder. Milk powder is imported because we don't have a dairy industry. We should have a dairy industry. We have cows. We should be able to have a dairy industry. You know, there are so many people watching us right now, and I believe that they're looking forward to invest in something here in Africa. Open a sugar factory. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all? Is that all? Open Is a sugar factory. Oh, Grow that, some, do some, get some cows, do a dairy. There's dairy. Grow some. Take the what we call a brofon katia in Ghana. Mm. Almonds, they taste so sweet. But it's not really being, it's not commercial. Fortunately, the government has commercialized um, cashew. And I think we can do the same thing with almonds. It's there, just, there's this there's question so that I really wanted to ask you, but I don't know if you, you are willing to answer me. On, um, I, I'm a cocoa farmer. Mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, you and, told um, me. I did quite a few research mm -hmm. and I realized that I can't even buy or use my own cocoa beans. Yeah. Where are you getting your beans from? Uh, so, I mean, legally, you can't use your own beans. Legally? You can't. Because and, and you have to sell the beans that you grow to the, um, the cocoa market, cocoa, cocoa board. Because I think that's the government's also, his, its way of also controlling the quality. Because you know Ghana is known for cocoa, good cocoa beans, quality cocoa beans. So it's, it's also its way of um, controlling the quality and also protecting the farmers. Because I could go to a farmer and cheat them. I don't do that, but I could. Yeah. So, yes. But um, I, I, I produce cocoa myself and I feel like the government is cheating me. Yeah. So, because I cannot be working so hard. Okay. At the end of the day, I need to just sell your cocoa to me. 515. I'll be selling my cocoa to you. Thank just you very much. A good it's price. a pleasure. I'll give you a good price. <laughs> let, let me know, how can people find you? Um, you can uh, contact us on www.biocotreats.com. Mm. We are on Instagram and on Facebook. And uh, our telephone number is in Ghana, um, 027-5440 and 055-883-9322. And you can order online. You can ship everywhere. Uh, we've started shipping to the US. And we are working with um, one of the sh uh, f companies to uh, look at their rates of shipping. Um. I have so many people out there mm -hmm. who are willing to buy everything in the mm -hmm. uh, kitchen at this very moment. Mm -hmm. So are you ready for us? How many can you sell it to us as soon as possible? Because I know after this... We are we ready. ready. You're ready? Yes. We're ready. Then, come on. Then, and then, then we have then, chocolate. Then, then we have chocolate bars as well. So oh, we, we have... have yeah, we have nine kinds of chocolate bars. Oh, okay. C can we see? Yes. I don't know. Those of you who went to boarding school in Ghana, this is a gari and peanut butter. So we have, we are supporting the cassava farmer, we are supporting the gari, through, through the gari, and then the peanut butter. All this we get locally. Wow. Then we have caramel crunch, and we have just plain milk chocolate, and this is with 50% cocoa. You know the health is in the uh, cocoa, not in the milk or the sugar. So this is reduced chocolate, reduced sugar, made with skimmed milk, and it's 50% um, cocoa. So some people might, who are used to some of the other flavors with a lot of milk and a lot of sugar might say, mm, I've had some customers come in and say, why is it so dark? I said, because it's the cocoa. Cocoa is good for you. Cocoa you know? is good for you. So we have, and then we, this is sugar free for the diabetics. Yeah. So we have nine flavors. And this is peppermint toffee. Peppermint toffee in dark chocolate. So we make a lot of things. I mean, yesterday somebody brought us some, uh, this is coffee. The coffee is grown by a young man in a coupon. Here in Ghana? Here in Ghana. I need to talk to him. So you know what, they got nine different flavors. And you know how we do it. 
it's by force. I'm not even gonna beg you. Oh, please order one chicken. I'm not here to do an advert. I'm here to force this on you. Whether you like it or not, it's time to support what black-owned businesses, African-owned businesses. So if you are buying your chocolate from Switzerland or you are buying your chocolate from even nowadays China is making chocolate. Yeah. So it's time to buy your chocolate from Ghana, straight from the cocoa beans to the chocolate bar. So boy, Mr. Ghana baby. I'm gonna see you online. If you order the chocolate, I'm the one who's gonna receive your order. So I'm gonna see you in the Hi, Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't wanna waste what's left. The storms we chase.